Hello everybody, welcome to MetaMoon. Today we have an exciting episode of Plato Explanations for you. I have with me Mike McCarg, the host of Ask Science Mike. He is an expert in all things science and the brain, and today he's going to explain to us how the brain works with Plato. I'm so excited for this. So I'm going to use a pretty it. old school model of the brain uh, simply because it's easy to understand and we'll talk about the three layers of the brain and how that affects our day every day. Let's see, let's start with green because why not? So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this Plato and I'm not a sculptor, my goodness. <laughs> and then I'm going to kind of roll it out a little bit. Put just a little bit of a curve on it. Okay, and this little bit of Play-Doh here is the brain stem. This is the innermost part of the brain. We've got our spinal column here, and we've got what's called the paleo-reptilian brain, our lizard brain. I call it a crocodile. This is where all of our survival functions live, our breathing, our respiration, how we know if we've got food poisoning, all that stuff lives right here in this layer of the brain. And then if we kind of go out a little bit more in the brain, we get to the paleo mammalian brain, which is called the limbic system. That's where our feelings live. Mm. And there's a couple of major features there. First of all, in what will look like a tiny miniature version of the brain itself is something called the thalamus. That's the signaling center of the brain. Okay, so that camera can see it as well. And then on either side of the thalamus, your brain's weird because it's in two hemispheres, it's got two halves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you'll have two of something, we'll call it one thing, which in this case is your amygdala, which you have one amygdala on the left side of your brain and one on the right. And they kind of sit right next to each other. And then wrapped around them is all this other tissue that makes up our limbic brain. Let's see, so if I make a ball and then flatten it, will that get me a, a sphere? Let's see, so we're gonna take these, we're gonna put them in here, and we're gonna wrap the limbic brain together, and then that lives on top of the brain stem, right? So you have the reptile, and then the mammal brain, which I call this the crocodile, and this the puppy, because it's feelings, it's social, it wants to make sure you fit in, We'll talk about that in a second when the model's done. And then we have like the rock star of the human brain. And that is the neocortex or the mm. new neomammalian brain, the neocortex, the new brain. It's where language, philosophy, culture, art are. And in your brain, uh, your uh, brain is about as big around as a tortilla and about as thick as one too, the neocortex. Oh. But What's weird about it is, we can't do this when I assemble the brain, but I'll show you now, is your neocortex is big and round and flat, and then it's folded in on itself. If you've ever noticed your brain looks wrinkly, that's why. Oh. Actually, that's pretty good, right? And so then this wrinkly neocortex gets wrapped around everything else. And so the way evolution creates brains is it stacks new stuff on top of old stuff. So at some point we were just this. That's right. And In then our at each layer past, kind we of keep adding things. Okay. And then finally there's one more little piece of the brain we should get to, and that's the cerebellum. And this is responsible for most of your voluntary movement. It is has two hemispheres as well, and it sits right on the back of the brain like that. This went way better than I thought it was going to. This is looking kind of brain like actually. So if this if we started with this and this was added last? This was not added last. Okay. Um, this is actually a pretty early addition to okay. the brain. Because if it's movement, mm -hmm. so oh, we yeah. would have need that. Okay. So what happens in every day is all three of these parts of the brain weigh in in your feelings and your decisions. So if someone like gets in front of you in the line at the grocery store, mm -hmm. that's a territorial intrusion and the crocodile goes, what? Mm -hmm. No, not okay. Oh, you've invaded my territory. Mm -hmm. And then the puppy, the next layer up goes, but what if they're my friend? Mm. So maybe we shouldn't kill them, but crocodile, if they're not our friend, we should kill them. You're right. And then finally, I imagine the human part of the brain is like an older person, like mm. reading a newspaper, because we know those neurons aren't as fast as the other neurons in our brain, who kind of looks over the paper and goes, what's going on out there? 
And then that part of the brain is aware that we have laws and social conventions that says, well, maybe that person is running late or maybe they're meeting a friend. Let's get more information mm. before we act. And so whenever we have things that surprise us about our own behaviors and beliefs, it's usually because different parts of our brain respond at different speeds. Got it. And that's all kind of what creates the miracle of a human so person. So it, it, most things kind of pass through us in that order? Of, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, cool. the, the crocodile or the... The reptilian brain gets the first shot, uh -huh. then the paleomammalian brain, or the puppy, and finally the neocortex, or the human part of the Which brain. Which is opposite of how we kind of think of ourselves, because we it seems like we typically associate ourselves with this part of the brain as like what we consider to be us and we think is in control. Yes, Western people especially associate their identities with their neocortex, especially one particular part of the brain, which I can make a pretty good model of, actually. It's called the... Uh, prefrontal cortex mm -hmm. it's about the size of a quarter and it's in your forehead right above your eye right for most people their left prefrontal cortex is what they most closely associate with their uh, with their identity because it's their conscious cognitive observer mm. happens in that little patch of so there's two of those as well there are yeah, okay. yeah. but one of them is more dominant typically the left is more dominant okay. in, in right-handed people okay <laughs> Interesting. And do they have like different qualities, the two? They do. Uh, when we because isn't of, there like is that is that an accurate thing? The left and right brain. Yeah. Difference? So let's do that real quick. Let's make a left and a right brain. If you want to try to make a ball like me of your Play-Doh, and then take one side and flatten it. All right. And then we'll we'll put those together. Okay. And we will have a brain. Right? Look at that. We have a two hemisphere brain. Okay. It's so cool. Um, and so what we've probably heard is that our right brain is creative mm -hmm. and our left brain is analytical. And then you might try to apply that to the prefrontal cortex on both sides of the brain. Uh -huh. That would be completely wrong. Mm -hmm. That's based on really old neuroscience. Yeah. What we understand is actually true is the right brain is holistic and the left brain is reductive. Mm. So if you're doing creative work or you're doing analytical work, you actually need a combination of holistic and reductive thinking. Mm -hmm. So both parts of the brain are active in, in almost everything we do, but the right brain sees a painting and the left brain sees a frame and a canvas mm. and pigments and brush strokes. And that's, okay. that's basically how the two halves of the brain work. Okay. Amazing. That was so great. <laughs> that was, I loved that so much. This is so good. I'll like hold this here. So this is our brain and that's how we work. So you talk about all this in your book that's coming out. Yeah. yeah. So, cause I remember reading all this in it. And so do you want to tell us what your book is called and when it's, it's coming out? It's called You're a Miracle and a Pain in the Ass. It's um, about this, about how our brains and our feelings sometimes confuse us and how to live with them more peacefully and more happily. And it comes out April 28th. Awesome. So if you want more about the brain, check out that book. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, this was amazing. <laughs> Cool, the end.